My next two guests on the show, the one is a VC and the other one is having his own travel app, Waymate, are already sitting at my table uh, waiting to be interviewed. So I want to ask you one more time. Give it up for Masood Kamali of West Tech Ventures and Max from Waymate. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Thank you. You look qu both quite relaxed. Did you already have your couple of beers or? Sorry, I thought I'm loud enough. So, um, if you are in a, um, um, that ecosystem, which is startup here in Berlin, you have to be careful. You shouldn't <laughs> drink too much, especially yeah. if you are CTO or CEO. Okay. No, I w <laughs> Maxim Norari, I won't ask you to your drinking behavior and what your opinion is on that. I mean, you have a way too, much, too interesting product for that. You have a travel app. It's called Waymate. What's That's so true. special about Waymate? Well, Waymate is basically um, bringing in different types of transportation, so airline, railway, bus, but also public transit. And, you know, those are very heterogeneous fields of transportation. Uh, and today, people don't just want to look for a flight or for a train. They yeah. travel with different modes. Mm -hmm. And we bring that on one platform, especially on the, on the mobile device, mm -hmm. and let you allow to choose all your options yeah. going from A to B. Yeah, so simply said, I mean, it's not only you can choose for bus or for airplane or for train, actually you can combine them all. Exactly, and it's, it's pretty diverse. I mean, it's very different industries that we're looking at. You know, airline is a completely different industry than railway, yeah. buses, yeah. I mean, yeah. pretty new in Germany, mm -hmm. and public transit, so it's yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah, what I find most of the time is that uh, because it's a B2C app, people think, oh, travel app, nice. But actually, you are a tech, a real tech company. You have a, a big team of techies who are daily working on this big database with all these uh, uh, things. So wh what's your own tech background? Exactly. Um, my, my tech background is, is pretty basic, uh, uh, which is none. So uh, we, we had the idea when the uh, Icelandic uh, volcano ashes came down, hey, why isn't there an app that gives me all options going from A to B? That one was, that's when the idea was born. So we've pretty much become a big data company, as I said, because we're talking to so many diverse um, authorities that yeah. provide us with data. Yeah, because, for example, you use uh, the, the uh, data of Deutsche Bahn. Yeah, just Do, do, do they have open accessible data for everybody to use? No, unfortunately not. It's pretty tough to get the data, and actually it's one of our core competences. And actually when you ask what's my job and my co-founder's job, that's pretty much what we do all day. We are out there getting the data from all those very different industries and bring them basically to our company. And there we have a bunch of very talented um, tech guys that implement that into our platform yeah. and make it a great user experience. Yeah, Masood, um, you're not only uh, an investor, but uh, you founded yourself also. A lot of companies actually, you're managing some of them yourself, like software and support, doing conferences, uh, print magazines, and I saw in old videos you're already talking about a cross-media world in a time where and actually some newspapers still do think that they can manage uh, without having like a proper website or even a business model behind that. And they're of course also really struggling. So what's your opinion on, you know, in what way tech is transforming actually our whole world? Well, um, some years ago I had a talk and I said CIO for president. That means um, I think tech changes everything. So, I mean, uh, uh, don't look at the publisher because publishers are very conservative and they change very late because they do everyday money so they don't want to give the money away so and they wait till they, they have no way anymore and then they stop their publishing but in general there is nothing in this world that you would say tomorrow uh, would be able without having a technology without mm -hmm. software mm -hmm. uh, as they say software it's it all so they yeah. mean you, everywhere you will see that software and I think we are now at the beginning let's speak in 10 years and you will see we have more application we, we see tech everywhere around us in everything mm -hmm. what we do mm -hmm. in everything what we drink in everything what we wear yeah. and, and I'm yeah. sure you heard about uh, Google Glass and you know that is a start of something a start of something else yeah. in our life but you say publishers are most conservative yes uh, but, but, but yeah. you're yourself also some kind of publisher right well uh, is a bit um, yeah I'm, I'm a publisher I, I, uh, I own a media company. are you also conservative um, 
Well, sometimes yes, yeah. We are not that good in digital publishing as, for example, some other guys because we are still good in something else. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> definitely we are not as good as a company without publish without print magazine, mm -hmm. without print books. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, we start a new magazine in the day which yeah. Financial Times Germany closed one magazine. We started a new, uh, closed their newspaper. Because I also read that you invest heavily in face-to-face -face meetings. Yeah, that definitely. you still think that this is not going to be replaced by some kind of technology. I don't think so, because as you see, your business is also very nice because you bring the people together. We are human, we need to um, communicate and see mm -hmm. face to face and speak yeah. and learn from each other. Yeah. That's something we wouldn't I mean, you've lived up. and worked all over the world. Uh, you've done a lot of different kind of investments. Uh, I think that you're also very ideological driven. I mean, you want to really contribute something to the world. Well, I think we should contribute something, make the world smarter. That's what in every investment that we do, we check. It does it help something in this world. And that's, that's the reason why if something comes like CT or CT car, and I will first think, okay, what do they want? What is the value they help to that loop that we see? And if they bring some value to that, what we do? We yeah. are going to support yeah. them. But that is also a little bit general, because if I look at your latest investment that was published, so to say, it's Tap Ticket Broker. Mm -hmm. It's a platform for buying like last minute cheap tickets. Yeah. How is that in heaven's name going to make a better world? Uh, have you ever wanted to go to a concert just you decided tonight I want to go out and I want to get a ticket and I don't want to pay $200 or 200 euro so, you? That is the value. They bring the value to 40% of the ticket, which is to every show is not sold. They help you to get in with your friends and have fun. Yeah, but they're not specialized in some kind of initiatives to actually make a better world. I mean, to be at a concert of a nice musician, that's not all, right, what there is. Well, that is to make your life easier. That is um, smart, I mean. You have fun, you go to the concert of, uh, what do you like, which kind of music do you like? Uh, let's blues. say, uh, you two, are, okay, okay, blues, okay. So you go to something, what is blues? Tell me. <laughs> BBL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just joking. Okay, you go to a concert of uh, Madonna, I, I send you to Madonna. Madonna yeah, so. I, oh, I love Madonna, yeah, great okay, blues exactly. artist. Okay, yeah. that will, they make your life easier, you get a ticket at that evening, you wanna go with some of your friends and you have fun. Right. I understand you, yeah. I do, I do. So what are criteria for you when you invest in a company? Okay, that's actually a really good question because to be honest to you, I didn't care that much about ticket broker business model than the team. Yeah, I, I met Florian three times at different events and then I met Florian the team. Kozak. Florian Kozak, the company founder. And that was the reason that I um, loved the company because, and then last week they had the warming party and then, and then I went there with, uh, and they said, oh, here's my mom, that's my auntie. Look, you go to the company, they are so committed to mm -hmm. the business. And he introduced his mom and um, his auntie and they worked there and that mm -hmm. is a f kind of family business in tech world, okay? What's nicer than this? And I was sure I did a good, um, okay. I so had a good guys, decision. If you want to get an investment of West Tech Ventures, bring your mom to the pitch, right? Because this is really going to work. It's just an insider's tip that you have now. Um, Maxime, uh, working at Waymate uh, means also a tough competition. We have in Berlin Go Euro actually doing exactly the same thing, right? Well, not quite. I think they miss the public transit part and they're not mobile yet. So, But I think it's good to have competition because if you don't have, you might be on a wrong track. So if another person has the idea to go in that direction, I think, um, well, then you're in the right area, aren't you? Uh, so I wouldn't be usually skeptical if there do, is do no competitor. Do you talk to them? Do you talk to them? Well, well, I know who they are, but you know what? No, what should we talk about? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, okay, how do you do it? And uh, maybe exchange some well, best practices? Well, that, that's our secret re recipe, I'd like to say, that the method on how to acquire this amount of data is, is really our secret recipe. Okay. And we have so much on shelf, and I really, that's the one part I don't want to disclose, how mm -hmm. we get that. Yeah. So uh, soon you're moving to, uh, into a bigger office, um, but uh, you got like uh, something like 1.2 or 3 million euros in investment and you've been you're around pretty for well informed. My uh, God. one and a half years old or so you're running out of money, right? So when are you going to get this new investment? 
Well, we're looking into investment this year, but we're not pretty pretty offensive on blasting out how much money we have because the much the more you blast about it and tell about it, the more others get attracted to the market. So we've kept it quite <laughs> silent. But you know, it's going to be this, the late this summer. We're going to do another finance round. Uh, basically, it's almost closed. It's almost closed. Okay. And can you reveal with whom? No. Okay, I thought so. And you're rightly so to not tell me. You shouldn't tell everything to journalists, right? Um, so finally, if there was one thing that you could achieve in this world, like your biggest dream, Masoud, what would it be? What would really be your, like your biggest dream ever? Well, I, I, I'm a bit older than you, so to be honest to you, I don't have that big dream. I'm really happy and lucky. Um, I don't have that big dream. But one thing that I want to make in Berlin, and I hope I can manage, I want at least to help two to five companies be 500 million company in this town, mm -hmm. or maybe 100 to 500 million company, and find the people to buy them, so that will help the ecosystem. The biggest problem of Berlin is we have a lot of accelerator. We have just Microsoft announced they want to come to Berlin. Yeah. We don't want them. They shouldn't start uh, prosim and whatever. Just stay at home, just invest the money and buy the Berlin companies. That's what we need. We need a lot more exit. Is that right, guys, or not? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So they have to buy the companies. That's what we need here in Berlin. And I want to help that company to be that big, that they are able to buy the others. And I want to have a world uh, full of millionaires in Berlin also. <laughs> and you're one of them then, right? Or Well, I serve that uh, yeah, ecosystem. Okay, there, okay. Yeah. So what's your, what's your biggest dream now? I mean, what, what would be, well, like, totally sweep away you? Dirk, it might sound a bit silly, but my dream is completely off startup. It's, it's, I'd really love to rent a club for one night <laughs> and sing Frank Sinatra from morning till evening, or <laughs> evening till morning, rather. That's actually my biggest dream to have that. It's, it's really far away of any tech thing. <laughs> I, I'm sure that somebody can help you with fulfilling that dream. It'll be awesome. We will be working on that from tonight onwards. So give it up for Masoud and Max, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.